We're so eager to change the world. But what we fail to realize is that the world is simply made up of countries, states, cities, communities, families, and individuals. So if we truly want to change the world, let's start by becoming our true selves. Welcome to In Treatment, where we're diagnosing the common illnesses in love and relationships. I'm your co-host, Dr. Lolita Brown. And I am Dr. Van Brown. Yes, welcome. <laughs> Make sure you guys subscribe, you like, you share, you comment below. Today's topic is so, so good. We're going to be talking about unforgiveness. Yes, unforgiveness. Um, we have to first understand what is unforgiveness mm -hmm. and the seriousness of it. Unforgiveness causes a flat line in your relationship. Yes. Have you ever been in a relationship where the person refused to forgive you? Mm. Have you ever been offended yes. by someone? Have you ever been in a relationship where it went months where you two are unwilling to speak because forgiveness wouldn't flow from either one of your mouth. Mm. Remember, in order to understand what unforgiveness is, we have to first know what is forgiveness. Yes. Forgiveness is simply the fertile ground for love and reconciliation to be possible. Mm -hmm. Remember, in, even in the Bible, the Bible says forgiveness is an act of love. So when you're giving forgiveness, you're actually extending an olive branch mm -hmm. for love to flow back into your relationship. That's so good. What we fail to understand, it says forgive, forgive, F-O-R-G-I-V-E, forgive. Forgive means to go in front of the apology. Yes. But the reason why there's unforgiveness is because we're waiting on the apology mm. in order for forgiveness to happen. Wow. I want I, to hear your take on it. I, that actually was my life story. <laughs> I would always, like, they did this to me, so I better wait till they say, you know, or ask for my forgiveness before I actually for, forgave them. I remember a time when me and my sister, I'm the youngest of 10, mm -hmm. and my mom and dad wanted, like, 20 kids, and... <laughs> Unfortunately, my father passed away after I was born, and so my mama never got remarried or never had any more children. But I remember when I was young and I had an experience with my elder sister, and she was, you know, bullying me and just telling me. She, they always used to joke and say that I looked different and that I, I didn't look like all of the other family members, and so they would say I was adopted. And I remember having a moment where I gathered like all my stuff in the house and I was like, well, this ain't my real family anyway. I'm gonna go find my real family. And I started to walk out the house and I was leaving and then my sister called me back and I went back home and they kept saying, my mom made them sit down and say, no, tell her that she's part of the family, that I'm her blood mother and everything. And they did that, but I held on to a grudge with them for years, wow. I could not forgive them be, from the things that they had told me about being darker than everybody else in the family, about you know my, my facial um, features being different and things like that. And so I, I held on to that for so long until I, I just really went to God and I was like, well, in order for God to forgive me, I have to be able to forgive them. And that was like the start of my journey. But I know we have some real life stories that we could talk about from um, people that we counseled. That's amazing. I, I forgot that you told me about that story. And uh, that's really profound. It's amazing how some of the persons that, uh, mm. that we claim to love the most and love us the most will be 
the recipient or the receiver of our heartbreak mm. of, of unforgiveness. Um, yes. There was a lady that I was counseling, and she had experienced extreme trauma from a father in and out of her life. And when he was in her life, he was uh, abusive. And so yes. she came to a conference where she wanted to be free mm -hmm. from every limitation that she had. And I was um, the speaker. And God told me to go and speak to this particular individual. But as I was trying to receive her, and my intentions was nothing but love, just wanting to communicate and talk to her, because mm -hmm. I could see that she was dealing with immense pain in, all, in her life. Yes. And as I tried to come closer, and even though she knew what I was doing was genuine and was real and what she needed, yes. she literally blurted out, I can't receive what you're saying. I can't receive it. I can't receive what you're saying. And that. And I asked why, and she started to reveal because of the experience and history mm. from the traumas of her past, so, and she couldn't forgive him. And so privately we met and we kept talking extensively, and she was able to forgive her father. Mm -hmm. But I think we fail to understand what forgiveness is. We tend to think that forgiveness is for the individual that you're giving it to. Yes. And that so is a part of it. But yes. mainly forgiveness is for yourself. Mm -hmm. When you decide to forgive someone, you're releasing yourself from this toxic tug of war. It's like a spiritual string. That's so good. And even though you guys are not communicating, because you are holding on to this unforgiveness, mm -hmm. you're you're drinking the poison and you're hoping, you're hoping the other person will die. That's what unforgiveness is. Mm -hmm. Unforgiveness is you poisoning yourself, hoping the other person will die. Wow. And so we have to understand that forgiveness is not only an act of love to the other person, yes. but it's an act of love to yourself and everyone that loves you. That's so good. Yeah. And what are like some of the common, you know, when we have like common sentences, symptoms of unforgiveness it's mm -hmm. bitterness right right we're offended easily mm -hmm. you know we don't find ourselves um genuinely wanting to have that conversation with the individual or even want the best for them you right. know i remember when i was having those experiences with my sister and i was like going through the process of not being able to forgive them I, I was not cautious with how I spoke to them. Mm -hmm. I wasn't um, thoughtful. You know, there were so many things that I go, I can look back now and think about, right. like, what was the cause of the pain? And right. it was unforgiveness. Right. Yeah. That's so beautiful. I'm so glad you were able to uh, look past that and get through it. Yes. Think about it. I want people to be able to identify, not only in their lives, but the, in the people that they love. Yes how unforgiveness, the symptoms of it show up in your life. Mm. Remember, unforgiveness is simply disappointment trapped in your soul and in your spirit. That's so bad. So it's just disappointment trapped that you're unwilling to release. And so how that shows up in our life, someone could make a mistake mm -hmm. that, someone could make a mistake that's a two but because of that unforgiveness, it's like this volcano just waiting to erupt. And what was a, should be a two, we make it a 10 because we're carrying that whole experience and then we're vomiting on the next person we come into contact with. Yes, so we're easily true. offended simply because if my tank is empty, mm -hmm. what gets me to a 10 will have to inquire a lot. Yes. But because my tank is already full mm -hmm. with all of this unforgiveness and all of this resentment, yes. what is a simple miscommunication or mm -hmm. simple misstep automatically erupts in what we see to be people spilling out on each other. Road rage is a mm -hmm. sign of unforgiveness. Wow. All of these simple things, oh, because yeah. think of it, you don't know this stranger, yes. but all of a sudden, because they did this and did that, mm -hmm. this whole altercation ensues. Yes. And so what unforgiveness does 
it causes the human being to be a ticking time bomb. Wow. Because we're not meant to carry that. Yes. God didn't design us to carry this. Mm -hmm. That's the reason why Jesus came. So we threw, we gave him all of our iniquity, all of our sins. Yes. But then here it is, Jesus died and came for us. But we're still deciding to carry the things wow. that he took. So unforgiveness could really reveal how you feel about Christ. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So every... how can you love mm -hmm. and, and not forgive? Mm. Wow. It is impossible. Because have you ever heard this sentiment? Think about it. Have you ever heard the sentiment, I forgive you, <laughs> but I won't forget? Yes. <laughs> That Type way, that. If you've I'll heard say, that, say yes. I'll say this again. Has someone you. ever said this to you? Mm -hmm. I forgive you, mm -hmm. but I won't forget. Yes. That right there is so hypocritical. It's so dysfunctional. It's a flat-out lie mm -hmm. because it's impossible to forgive. God himself said, for this reason... I lose this out of my mind. He said when he forgives, he wipes it from his mind. Wow. Meaning he, he gives you a clear slate. Mm. So if God says, I hold no record of these things for your sake, yes. then why are we holding records on each other? Mm -hmm. We don't understand what forgiveness is. We don't understand the benefit of forgiveness. We don't understand the grace. Yes. Of forgiveness. That's true. We don't know because if we did, we would govern our lives a different way. Yes. What is your take on? It takes me back to the time that we counseled that the one couple where they they had infidelity in mm. their relationship. Mm. You know, they were just newly married, thought everything was going right in their relationship. You know, going through the love, I love you phase, nothing's wrong. Right. And then the wife ended up finding out that the husband had cheated on her. And they came to us for counseling because the wife could not forgive him for what he did. Although she wanted to keep the relationship, she wanted to, you know, continue to build with him and, and move in purpose with him, but she could not forgive him. And so I remember when they came to us, the first thing that you were talking about with them was, um, why do you love each other? Mm -hmm. Why do you guys care? Why, why did you decide to go into this relationship? Right. Remember? It was so good. Yes. Yeah. Because what, what destroys unforgiveness is the reason why. It's called purpose. So good. Yeah. What destroys unforgiveness is the reason why. Think about mm -hmm. it. There's no love like a mother's love. Because even... At a guilty trial, even with her hugging on a jail cell of her son, she is still saying, that's my good boy. Because there's no love like a mother's love. No one forgives like a mother. Yes. Simply because that's so true. she's wired to, to forgive that way. Here's what the biggest confusion that the woman was experiencing. Mm. She wanted to be in the relationship but she didn't want to utilize the principle in wow. order to be in the relationship. Yes. I'll say that again. Mm -hmm. She wanted to be in the relationship. She wanted to have a successful relationship. Yes. But she didn't want or was unable to use the principles mm -hmm. that would allow her to be successful in the relationship. It doesn't happen overnight. Mm -hmm. But like I said, Every decision starts with an action step. Mm. The minute you decide that this is the person that you're still going to build your life with, yes. you have to behave your way to success. And forgiveness is a behaving vehicle. So why do you think she felt that way? Do you think it was because of pride or was it because of just wanting what the world tells us what we should have. 
You know, sometimes we get into a relationship. I know I'm guilty of this. You know, I was in a relationship and, you know, the, the, the person cheated on me. And I remember breaking up with them and being mad and angry and then getting right back into a relationship with them. Mm -hmm. um, mostly because I didn't know my self-worth. I didn't know, you know, um, what it felt like to not be in a relationship. I was, I'm such a relationship person, so I was always in a relationship. Right. But, you know, and the, and the young lady that we counseled, um, the couple, why do you think she wanted that relationship? What was the purpose in her wanting to continue to do it, even though she went through in, infidelity and things like that? Um, great, 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 great point. <laughs> we, common sense will say, the betrayal to go outside of a marriage mm. is the severing of the relationship. Divorce is the only outcome. However, when you have built something that works mm -hmm. and a mistake happens, even in her pain, yeah. even in her frustration, even in the devastation of it, internally and spiritually she knew this was something worth holding on to. Yes. But what prevents it from recovering faster mm -hmm. than it should is ego and pride. When someone has betrayed you, That's good. Whether, it's, whether it's infidelity, whether it's lies, scandal, whether it's the, the, the squandering of funds, mm -hmm. whatever the case is, our ego and pride ha is shot. Mm. Simply because when someone has devoted themselves to you, they're saying to you, you are the only valuable person in my life. Yeah. And when a scandal happens like infidelity, it robs them of their value. Mm. Wow. And so it's very difficult for someone to forgive someone who have robbed them of their value. Wow, that's okay. So what the person has to do mm -hmm. has to reinstate the value. But the person has to make a decision that I am valuable all by myself first in order to successfully forgive. That's good. So before we give the viewers um, the, the treatment, the cure, what would you say, just a recap, like, and I can say some too, we can say that, how do you know you're suffering from unforgiveness? Mm. Um, if there's- Offended, an, offended easily. Offended easily, yes. <laughs> if uh, you, you- It's always somebody else's fault. Yes. That's so good. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that was right what I was about to say. If you, um, if you can't continue to be in that relationship, I love how you said that because of her wanting to be in the marriage and she made a decision, she kept to it. I think we're in a time right now where people are so quick to give up on their relationships. Right. They're so quick to just throw in the towel and stop fighting. Right. You know, I remember in my mom days, like they they used to go through a lot of stuff, and they were not going to give up that relationship. You know, and so if you if, if we're talking about some of the things that people can identify that they're going through unforgiveness, mm -hmm. um, if they feel like they are, it's difficult for them to get back in a relationship, especially mm -hmm. if you experience someone cheating on you or anything right. like that, and then you're like, well, you know, I don't want to be in a relationship right now, and I, right. I'm, I'm working on myself. You, know? you just want to be casual. Mm -hmm. I remember my first heartbreak, mm -hmm. and not first, but first adult heartbreak, and I remember laying in the bed because not only did she cheat, but yeah. it was so abruptly and it was so violent that I remember laying in my bed and I said, I will never let another human being hurt me this way. What I did in that moment, yes. I literally gave unforgiveness to myself. Wow. Because the minute I said that, I no longer became an advocate for love, I became a mm. casual observer. Yes. So we could even give unforgiveness to ourselves okay. in the statements we make. And every time I saw 
every time someone tried to get close, mm -hmm. I would sever the relationship because I mm -hmm. didn't want to feel that pain again. So we have to understand how unforgiveness shows up. We think it's just geared towards an individual, yes. but it's actually more violating to ourselves. Mm -hmm. Because remember, when you have an unforgiving heart, that bleeds in all areas of your life. That's true. So you're limited in your relationships. You're limited in the success of yourself simply because the creator, God who invented us mm -hmm. and gave us life, didn't put that flaw in us for, to carry. So in order for us to evolve and, and be successful, yes. we have to rid ourselves of this toxic foreign thing out of our bodies. Yes, and I think our viewers can relate to that. Right. You know, having a situation where it was someone else who did the situation to you, and you couldn't unfor you couldn't forgive them. Right. And then there's times where we've done stuff to ourselves. Right. And we have an unforgiveness towards ourselves. Right. Yes. Yeah, so there are so many things we've done to ourselves. Some of us, we mm -hmm. actually violated ourselves. We were complicit in the relationship. Yes. We knew from the very beginning we never should have been with that person. Yes. We knew from the very beginning we should have never took that job. Yes. We knew from the very beginning we should have never moved out of state. Sure. We knew from the very beginning that I had no right being with that crowd. Yeah. And now I'm behind bars mm. because of decisions and it's hard for me to forgive myself yes. because I've inflicted pain on the people that love me. I've taken time away from myself, from my um, responsibilities. Mm -hmm. So all, even in the missteps as a parent, there were certain decisions we made concerning our children yes. that cost the child. And we find it hard to forgive ourselves. I'm talking, listen to me, forgiveness is just not husband, wife, boyfriend, girlfriend. Forgiveness is in all areas of your relationship. Yes. Some of us are unwilling to forgive God. Mm. And we Talk don't understand that. that part. That is a whole thing in, it, in itself. Yes. But here's what we do. We go prematurely. We disobey what God is saying. Mm -hmm. We disobey the manual and everything it says. We get into relationships where they don't honor us and they don't give a great understanding of who we are. Right. We make decisions solely on our opinion and our passions. And when we're traumatized by our decisions, we blame God for the missteps when we went prematurely. Yes. You know, I feel it so strongly right now that I want to give the viewers an opportunity to just take a few minutes and say, I forgive myself. I forgive that person that, you know, caused me harm or did something to me that I'm still holding on to. Right. Because I think before we can give them the cure and how to treat this unforgiveness, I want you to be able to release it. So if you could just say, if you'd want to type it or say it, I forgive myself. I, I forgive so and so. My parents. Yes. First thing. Some, some of us are harboring unforgiveness towards our parents and we don't even know. Yes. How do we know that we're harboring unforgiveness? You get irritated very easily by the things that they say. That's a form of unforgiveness. When you get irritated very easily. We're harboring things towards them and persons Here's another sign of unforgiveness. Mm. When we're irritated by authoritative figures who try to correct us, police officers, uh, the boss on our job, when we're easily irritated by those things, we have the spirit of unforgiveness. Yes. And so, like my wife said, join them, um, I forgive myself. Yes. I forgive my parents. Mm -hmm. I forgive my past friends, past lovers. I forgive those who have, even the ones that I can't even recall. Mm -hmm. 
you first have to expose the enemy in yes. order to be cured. Because forgiveness is a sign of letting go. I have to let go, right? Yes. Because we're holding on to something that is not benefiting us. But in some ways, unforgiveness does benefit the individual in an ignorant way. How do we know that? Mm. Because it gives us permission to be victims. Wow. Could you believe what they did to me? Ten years later, they're still saying that, and it gives them permission to be limited in everything that they've done. Wow, that's so true. Type love if you've experienced something like that. You've heard someone say something of that nature. Can you believe what they've done to me? I can't believe that they've hurt me like this or they've done this. You don't understand what I've been through. Yes. Yes, you don't understand what I've been through. You think it's that easy to move on? Mm. You don't understand. All of these yeah. are true statements. But here's the reality. Mm -hmm. In order for me to be my best self, the self that God intended me to be, I have to let it go. Yes. Remember, all of our traumas, if we release it, and allow God to utilize it, people will know us all over the world because of our pain and our trauma if yes. we give it to God. See, everything is useful in the right hands. So good. That's in so your good. hands is victimization. <laughs> in God's hands, it's his deliverer of nations. Wow. Think about this. They locked Mandela away for 27 years of his life. Mm. Nothing but pain, away from his family, away from his children. When he came out and God used it, he became the first South African president. Wow. Not only that, the people that were in a part of putting him in prison, mm -hmm. he literally brought them on as a part of his government to be the peacemaking process. Wow. He forgave someone that put him away for 27 years because he saw the benefit of the country. Mm. He put his own personal feelings aside in order to embed the country. Can you put your personal feelings aside yes. in order for God to move through your life and bless your family? Bless the people that are assigned to you. Bless your community. Bless your nation. Until you keep taking it. See, it's not meant to be personal. No. The world is filled with sick people. And we're still shocked mm -hmm. that persons vomit on us. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say that again. The world is filled with sick people. Even our churches are filled with sick people. That's the reason why they're coming. Mm -hmm. They need a touch from God, and they heard about this church. But we're shocked that church folks lie. They fight. They scandal. They, they, they say rumors about you. Oh, why are we shocked by this? This is a hospital. Mm -hmm. This is a spiritual hospital. The world is a sick place. Never take anything personally. We have to go deep into the lab, yes. our spiritual lab, and say, Father, turn my trauma into pain. I release this unforgiveness. Mm -hmm. Everything they did, don't let it go to va in waste. Father, utilize everything they've done and make me into a monument that will glorify you. That's so good. That's what we need to do. That's so good. Let's, let's give them each one of us, two things that they can do to release this unforgiveness in their heart. First thing I want, I want to go to Colossians 3, 13 before we go. We have to back this up with scripture. Amen. Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. Mm. See, this is it. We love, we want forgiveness when it benefits us. Mm -hmm. But when we have to do the work, we're unwilling to do it. 
But sure. as long as we're benefiting, mm -hmm. it's easy. Oh, God, please forgive me. I didn't mean to do that. Mm -hmm. But when it's our turn, and God is saying in this, I'm not going to forgive you if you're not willing to forgive them. Wow. Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. Mm -hmm. I'll say another scripture, Mark eleven twenty five. 25. And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them mm -hmm. so that your Father in heaven may forgive you your sins. Wow. So God is saying here, here it is, you come to church, you're saying hallelujah, you're blessing, but you have grievances with your wife at home and your husband at home. God is saying, I, it, you are better off going home and making amends with that. Yes. Rather than, yep, yeah. we don't understand yeah. what forgiveness is. That's so good. And, and I would say that when it comes to releasing an unforgiving person or heart is go before God, pray, ask God to, to, to give you the strength, mm -hmm. the ability to, to just release what it is that you are holding on to or that you wanted to, to keep a grudge to, give it to him. Mm -hmm. God can receive it. He can take it. He can wipe that pain away. And once you do that, then start to walk in faith knowing that, you know, this, the situation God has already went ahead and dealt with it. As a matter of fact, let's do this with them because I feel the strong need to pray this prayer. I want you to, this is a simple prayer we could pray. Yes. Father, forgive me. Mm -hmm. I feel so strongly to hold on to this unforgiveness. Mm. But Father, you know all things better than I do. Help me to release this unforgiveness from my heart because I simply want to do the right thing. I want to be whole in order for you to work through me. Father, right now, yes. give me the wisdom, the intelligence, and the fortitude to make a healthy decision to release this, Father. Right now, I give you my unforgiveness of my parents, of my friends, my past lovers, the teachers that harmed me, everyone that have violated me, even the ones that I can't recall at this moment. Father, right now, I surrender it to you. Yes, Lord. You are the orchestrator. You are the inventor of my life. You are the creator of all things, Father. I don't understand why this happened. But I know, Father, it would make sense when I put it in your hands. Yes. Father, right now, I am giving up my understanding, and I am receiving yours. Have your way with me. And, Father, let the stench of my pain and suffering be to the glory of others. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Wow. Well, thank you for tuning in to Entreatment. Got me going. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in into Entreatment. Make sure you guys subscribe, like, share this message. Maybe to someone that you know you've experienced unforgiveness with. Maybe you know someone who just needs to hear this. Share, like, comment, and we'll see you guys next time on Entreatment.